Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over creating a basic table for a web page using uh, XHTML. Um, we used to spend a lot of time with tables in web design, especially since they were used as a layout tool. That's no longer the case, but we still do need, from time to time, to use regular old tables. So here's a good example over at W3 Schools. They're displaying some browser statistics and I'm going to kind of create a little mini version of this table as an example but this is a really good situation for traditional table so let me go and jump over to my editor of choice which is notepad plus plus and I've got a blank page already set up here basic tables and um, I'm gonna just put some CSS right inside of the head section embedded styles but let me go ahead and start off first with structuring the table now, table tags, there's a few new ones, a few new elements you have to be aware of, but they're not that tough. Whenever you want a table, you have to have a set of table tags. And I'm going to go ahead and give my table a unique ID. I'll call it bstats for browser stats. And let me go ahead and close off that table so I don't forget about it later. So one table needs one set of table tags. Now within that table, I'm, I'm going to mark off two key sections, the T head, and the t-body. Now, technically these aren't necessary for the table that I'm going to create, but it's a good habit to get into. The table head section, the table body section, there's also a t-foot section. Now, within my table head section, I'm going to have a row, and you designate a row with a set of tr tags. So, table tags for the table, T head tags for the table head section, TR tags for the table row. And within my table row, I'm going to be having table headers. So there we go. And I'm going to use Control D to repeat that a few times. So I'm going to have five table headers. Basically, I'm going to have a five column table um, to work with. And in my header sections, my first one is going to be blank. So I'm just going to use a non-breaking space, and then I'm going to go ahead and fill in uh, four different browsers for my other table header sections. There we go. So I'm going to focus on IE, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari for my table data. Now, very similar, in the table body section, I'm going to have several rows with data. And I'll indicate each row accordingly with a table set of table row tags, and of course, each cell within this row, this one is going to use the table data tag, TD. So you'll use the TD tag for most of your table data, and the TH tag is specifically for cells that are column headers. Okay, so table headers. So I'm going to go ahead and make five cells per row, and I'm going to go ahead and put in some data in there. There we go. So now my table is populated with some data. So notice in my table body section, I have three rows, and then with Within each of those rows, I have five cells. Each cell is with a TD set of TD tags. The first cell in each row is the month. There we go, followed by the data in the corresponding column. So this is the basic structure of an HTML table, all to get us really over to um, this particular example right here. So the first column, these would indicate the first set of TD tags within each row. The row up here with the browser names, they are, these are the TH tags within the very first row or the table head section. Next order of business is to see how things are looking. So let me jump over to my browser. I'm using uh, Chrome today and refresh. And this is my basic table, but I want to go ahead and format it a bit. So I'm going to use some style sheets to take care of that. So back over to my editor. Now I'm going to scroll up into the style section and take care of a few things. So I definitely want to start off with a reset rule. So I'll use an asterisk selector and I'll set all margins to zero picks and all padding to zero picks. And let me go ahead and start off by structuring my table. My table is uniquely identified, which is good. You always want to uniquely identify elements. So my table is uniquely identified as bstats. So I can say that, the, look, this table is going to have a border, 5 pixels, solid. I'll do a dark blue. And let's see, I'm also going to set its margins, 20 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right. I'll set its width to about 500 pixels. There we go. So just those few changes right there is going to get my table centered on the web page. 
Now I'm going to work on the cells within the table. And the cells, of course, are the TH elements and the TD elements. So back over to the editor. And let's see. I'm going to format my TH cells and my TD cells with some common characteristics. So within vstats, I've got TH cells. Within vstats, I've also got some TD cells. So these are descendant selectors. So TH is within vstats. TD is within vstats. And for these, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set their widths to 20%. So basically, they're all going to be of equal width. You can also use per, uh, pixel measurements in there. And let me go ahead and do a couple other things. How about a thin border? One pixels. How about black for that? And since most of my cells contain numbers, I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, text align right. Okay, and let's see what this is looking like. Okay, one more fix. Let's go over here and let's put some padding on there. How about padding of four pixels? Okay, so now it's really clear to see where the cells are. I've got all of my cell contents are aligning to the right. Now you'll notice that there's some default spacing in between the cells. There's really a couple ways to fix this. There's an old HTML attribute called cell spacing, which you would actually put in the table tag. Instead of doing that one, I'm going to use a CSS property called border collapse for the table. So let me jump up to the rule. This is, remember, bstats is the actual table rule. And I'm going to put in this property, border collapse, collapse. And what this will do, it will force the elements within that table to share borders. So that kind of makes it a little bit uh, cleaner looking. Okay, and let me go ahead and do just a little bit more color formatting here. So while I'm at my uh, table, I've got a dark blue border. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and put a lighter blue background color. CCF, that's a light blue. There we go, so dark blue border, light blue background. Now the only last thing I want to take care of is I want to work with the uh, the style of my first column here, October, September, August. I don't want these to be right aligned. Everything else I like right aligned, but I want these to be left aligned. And I also would like them to be bold so that they are very clear that they're row headings. So they look a little bit more like my THs up here. So to take care of those, I'm going to use a special descendant selector with a pseudo class selector. So keep in mind I've got my B stats table and let's take care of TDs within that table but specifically the first child. Okay so I'm using the first child pseudo class for my cells and if I look down on this um, actually let me go ahead and indicate the TRs. There we go. So the TDs within the TRs within the table. So let's look at this. Within my TRs, here's an example right here. In fact, let me look at this one even better. My set of TRs has five children. There's five sets of TD tags. The first one, though, I want to be formatted differently. And that's what the first child pseudo class is all about. So with these, I'm going to do a text align left. And I'm also going to do a font weight bold. Now, if you recall, I didn't actually set font weight bold for my THs. TH elements, that's one of their default characteristics, is that they're bold. So now the first child, the first cell within each row within my table is going to be left aligned with bold. Save that. Back to the browser and refresh. There we go. So that's my basic table with a little bit of CSS formatting. And if you'd like to grab the HTML and CSS that I used here in Notepad++, I'm going to go ahead and upload this to the web, and I'll provide a link where you can find it, download it, check it out, and I'll put that link in the notes for the video.